Okay. Well, officially, welcome to Mind Probe with Mom. I'm yeah. Amber Jean. I am an actor, comedian, astrologer, and I'm here with my mother, Star Rhodes. Mm -hmm. That's me. That's my name. Don't wear it out. <laughs> Literally only said it maybe four times ever in my whole life. So haven't worn it out yet. And we are here with Becca Lorenzo. That's her new Ooh. last name because she's a married woman. Yes. Whoa. Watch out. Wow. And um, today we're going to be talking about a little something called human design ever heard of it probably not because not a lot of people have just the really cool woo woo girls we are in the know and um and mom, boys boys and boy, in the world and, and non-binary people and, you know whoever everybody 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 everybody, everybody all loves the, bananas all the things and so yeah the, okay we got to talk about what what even is it and why it's good how you can use it and um i tried telling my mom about human design probably on mm. 18 different occasions and yeah she's retained zero of no the information can't retain it <laughs> I, that's why i have an app on my phone so that way it retains in there <laughs> yeah. And so we're hoping that Becca can can break through the blockage that my mom has in her brain of trying mm -hmm. to learn uh, human design. <laughs> she can get in there somehow and probe that mind of mom. So hello, Becca. I would love to hear um, maybe just a little intro of how you even got into human design in the first place. I would love that. I'm so excited to probe your mind um so <laughs> <laughs> we need so, music yeah <laughs> every time you say probe oh that's a good idea mm -hmm. yeah you need sound effects um so my name is becca hello hi um i am a business mentor but i started off um my entrepreneurial career being a human design reader um so long story short i was, you know, in my twenties on a quest to like figure out who I am and find my purpose and all of those things that mm -hmm. we like to, to do in our twenties. Uh, I was like working in the nonprofit world. I really felt like, okay, I think I found my thing. I think I found my purpose. I was working with animals. Then I was starting to get very burnt out and like physically unwell. Um, and that's when I kind of stumbled across human design in a podcast, I learned about being a reflector and how reflectors are very mm -hmm. sensitive to their environment. We we pick up things from our environment. Working in an animal shelter, you can imagine it's like not really a zen place to work. It's like yeah, that's really... an interesting thought. Yeah, because yeah. you're amplifying all the animals and stuff. Have you noticed? I mean, nobody. If the people who don't know anything about human design, they don't know anything about reflectors yet. But, oh, man, I have so many reflector questions for you. But um, I guess I'll just wait <laughs> before I <laughs> ask them. Um, but, okay, what is, like, the... Uh, what is it? Yeah, what even is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going to give you the, the skinny. I think I'm excited about this, too, because I... The way I like to teach is like, what is the simple, most practical mm -hmm. way of, of teaching this? Because when you look at your human design chart, you're going to be like, what the fuck am I looking at? It's very confusing. There's like lines and colors and numbers and arrows. And it's so much. And it is such a dense system because yeah. it combines lots of different systems together. So it can be like the most confusing thing in the world but it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be because the whole point of human design is to basically make your life easier and to help you be more of yourself to like yes. let go of the of who you think you need to be it's and just literally permission be. slip of like yeah I operate differently than everyone else because my energy is built in such a way that is unique to me and different from everybody else 
And let's just say, like, what's the difference between human design and astrology? Because you could you could say the same thing for astrology. Like, hey, oh, that was my question. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so there, they have similarities in the sense of they both are systems that that try to understand how do the planets affect who we are. Um, and so they have that in common because astrology is a part of human design. Yeah. So human design is like a synthesis of all these different systems, mm -hmm. like being woven together, basically. So it's, um, let's see if I can remember them all, the Kabbalah tree of life, the I Ching, um, the chakra system and astrology. Those are like the big ones. And mm -hmm. some guy basically received this <laughs> download, some guy Raw. named Ra. <laughs> Where do you remember what he, his real name is or no his I, original oh, yeah. name it was like alan Krakow. oh yeah alan, or something. <laughs> alan yeah. yeah and then he changed it to raw there's a whole story there but he like he he channeled or downloaded basically this information and he you know he like interwoven all of these systems together in a way that i don't even fully understand like the way that they're all it's very complicated and confusing, it's cool how they all fit together though and yeah. um when you were saying like oh man it is really complex and stuff um the first time i ever heard of it i looked up my chart and i was like what even am i looking at and yeah. I'm somebody who likes to look um, at systems. I'm a projector and that's a thing that projectors have in common. Um, and I looked at it and I was like, what the heck? And then I tried to read about it a little bit. And I was like, cause I went on the actual like human design website, the Jovian archive website. And it was like all this lingo and stuff was so confusing and I was like, oh, I don't even care about this. I was too, I was too overwhelming. And then uh, like a year later, somebody asked me, what's your human design? And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Let me look it up. And then that person knew about it. And then that person that I was talking to was giving me some information. And I was like, oh, wow, this is really describing me. And this is actually really cool information. And then I started to recognize like, okay, if I can get somebody who speaks the same language as me to kind of translate what this dense material is, then, then the information is actually the, some of the coolest information, the most helpful stuff I ever, ever learned about myself. Yeah, totally. And I think there's, yeah, it's, it's very, uh, unapproachable in a lot of ways, which is a shame because the actual like nuggets of the information don't have to be confusing or dense if you just know how to like break everything down, yeah. which was when I got into human design, that's what I wanted to do for like the clients I worked with is basically just like give them the the long and short of like, okay, what do you actually need to make your life better? Like that's right. what I really care about at the end so of the day. So what Some is people the long and short? <laughs> so the law <long> because <laughs> we don't have a ton of time so let's try okay. and uh look at what where where do you start when you want to tell yeah. somebody something important about okay. themselves okay so again i'll reiterate kind of the point of human design is to unlearn all of the mm -hmm. conditioning that tells conditioning. you you have to be something that you're not so we're not yeah. wanting to like teach you how to be a new thing it's like reminding you of who you are and giving mm -hmm. you permission to be that so I just see it as like a self-awareness tool it's not going to like solve your whole life but it does give you it gives you language to like understand yourself and your kind of internal experience in a in a way where you know like okay if I do these practical things life will feel easier for me and I'll kind of get more in alignment mm -hmm. with my per with my purpose essentially so when you look at your chart, you need your, your exact birth information. Also just PS, if you're listening, um, mm -hmm. if you don't have it, there are different ways that you can kind of approach trying to get like an estimate. You can DM me on Instagram if you want to, and I can talk to you about that, but ideally we need your exact birth yeah. time. There's birth astrologers day. that specialize in remediation, which is what it's mm -hmm. called when you're like trying to find out what time you were born, but you don't have your birth certificate. And these people will ask you a whole bunch of questions and they'll sync it up with the transits of, of what was going on. And then they'll give you a, um, their best guess. And so yeah. 
if you want to look that up, astrologers who do remediation. Mm -hmm. Totally. <laughs> so, so that's kind of the goal here. So you, yes, you get your exact birth information. You get this chart. That's like a clusterfuck of colors and numbers and lines. It's very confusing, but the good thing is, is there's basically an, a kind of a hierarchy of how you should approach the information, in my opinion. So there's like an order. Mm -hmm. So you don't just go and pick a random spot. <laughs> you start you start with your type, your strategy, yeah, type. and your authority. That's where I want to start with. And then if we have more time, I can talk about like where I would go next. But you start with those, with those things, type, strategy, yeah. and authority. And so mom, what's your type? You know this. Wait, so can we back it up a little bit for yeah. people who have no idea what you guys are talking about? <laughs> yep. So there's the zodiac. Yeah. The wheel. Uh-huh. And then your zodiac sign in the middle. And that is astrology, right? Sure. And and then there's this. <laughs> <laughs> the human design yeah this so, is mine yeah okay you so see like all when... the little symbols on the side that says like all the different planets and stuff do you see all, all yes like along yes. the sides there uh -huh. that's telling you your astrology like your your son was in um like 27 Wait. degrees aquarius and then mm -hmm that 27 degrees Aquarius it you take that and you plop it on what's that other chart called Becca the, the I Ching the the rave or something oh the rave mandala isn't that where it has like all the I Ching numbers um yeah like synced with the astrology yeah yeah and so you want to take it from there <laughs> yeah so this is the thing I, if you're like a super systems nerd, like Amber is totally, totally go down that rabbit hole. If you just care about how do I use this weird thing to make my life better? You don't need to worry about that. I don't recommend anybody <laughs> like get too concerned with like figuring out the intricacies of how all the systems weave together. Cause it's fucking confusing. I don't even like fully get it. So but astrology is is one piece of it. Um, yeah. But basically, all the systems kind of are interlocked in this beautiful sort of a way. And they get you this chart, which is basically going to give you a lot of information about you, about how you're designed to make decisions, about what your strengths are, about what some of like your vulnerabilities might be. And basically, what I try to do for people is help translate that information to them so they can actually mm -hmm. use it in their life. So mm, my mom has um, a one profile. So you know she's going to want to ask yeah. every little detailed question. And her yeah. and her Mercury is in Aquarius. So she, she, she is that type of person who wants to, like, understand the how. And, like, yeah, that's funny, mom, that you were like, okay, you went too far ahead. I needed to know the little things in between. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and it makes sense. Like, cause... where did that shape come from? <laughs> mm -hmm. What is it? A diamond? What is it? Freeways? <laughs> Squares? Yeah. This is, a great, this is a great example of, you know, they call human design the science of differentiation because it's like just understanding how we're all very different. And I'm very different than you in that and Amber too. I'm a three five. So yeah, I'm we're like both three fives and I have need motivation, which is something we could, it's just another part of the chart that makes me very like, I don't need the details. Just give me the like important <laughs> practical nuggets, but you think a different way star. Cause you're a line one and line ones are the investigator. So they literally are like, I need to know every detail. So that's like amazing. Cause that's how you're designed to be. I'm like, I don't, I don't want the detail. I don't want all the Let's details. just try like, it out and see what happens. Yeah. That's what yeah. three fives are. Yeah, exactly. What, um, another easier way to kind of look at this is like, so when you look at your, your body graph is like what you're looking at on your phone, all mm -hmm. the different shapes that you're talking about, the triangles and the squares and stuff, 
those basically come from the chakras. So, you know, the chakra system, your solar plexus and your whatever, um, that's where that was adapted from. In human design, we call them the energy centers. And I just look at them as like, they're just hubs of where that energy lives in your body. So you have your emotional center, you have your throat center, which is all about communication. You have your splenic center, which is about like instinct and so on and so forth. So it's basically like giving sort of a, a blueprint of basically how energy moves throughout your body. And when we talk about when we talk about your, sorry, I'm hearing crazy noises in my house. It's just my dog. Um, I think it's just my dog, unless it's my husband, Jimmy. No, it's just my dog. Um, I love saying my husband, I just got married. We, I don't know if we said that yet, but so like whenever I say my husband, I'm like, <laughs> my husband. Um, <laughs> he has no so, name. His name is now husband. Yes. Husband, yeah. Yeah. So um, basically, you know, it's kind of understanding how does energy move throughout our body, but then also how does our energy move throughout the world? How do other people feel our energy? How are, how's our energy designed to like move throughout life in a way that like is in flow and like easy to us. So when you pull up your chart, the first thing you're going to look at is your type. And there are mm -hmm. five different types. And what type is, is your aura type. So your aura is like, what's the energetic field that you are in? That when you move around and when you interact with other people, they feel it from you. When we talk about type, that's really what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, there, there are five different types. Some people argue there are four, but we don't have time, whatever. We don't need to get into the minutia of all of that. Um but basically there are five different types, uh, reflectors, projectors, manifestors, generators, and manifesting generators. So Amber is a projector. Projectors are like 20% of the population. I'm a reflector. Reflectors are like 1% of the population. Yeah, um, mom, you're meeting a reflector, which is very rare. This is a very <laughs> wonderful moment for you. <laughs> In case you didn't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, and star, you're an MG and you guys are like maybe 35 manifesting roughly. generator for those. Yes. Who don't know sorry. What that means. Yes. A manifesting generator, uh, generators and manifesting generators have the same aura type, but I consider them kind of two different types because they are a bit different, whatever let's I look at. Let's compare a projector versus a manifesting generator. Just so my mom can kind okay. of. Uh, get a feel for those because she knows me yeah and, yeah and the way what the one last thing I'll say about the types in general the way that I kind of explain this if you know astrology is you know I'm a like I'm a reflector and you know my business partner is a reflector that doesn't the chart gets differentiated from there just like how I'm a Pisces and Amber's a Pisces but I have a Virgo a uh, moon and a or Vir Virgo rising and a Libra moon and and her things are say. <laughs> sorry <I do> <laughs> and she has other things in her in her rising and moon so just because we're both Pisces doesn't mean that we're the same or that our charts are the same it's the same thing so just like if there are two projectors their charts are still going to be totally different type is mm -hmm. just like the first place you start kind of like in astrology how you kind of start with your sun sign it's not exactly the same thing but that's sort of like the thing I would compare it to to just understand how it's very it's very different but we start yeah. with the type so uh Amber's a projector um you're a manifesting generator basically the big difference between the two it, it comes down to your energy and how you use your energy so um projectors are what we would call like a, a non-sacral um, so projectors energy isn't designed to be like, go, go, go all the time. How a projector is designed to work in the world is they're meant to basically be seen um, and be recognized and then be invited to share their like genius and their insight with the world. They're not people that are really meant to be like uh, to do as much doing as they are like guiding and leading and speaking and like sharing their ideas. Um that's like a very project, which like Amber is a total projector. Like I could just listen to her, just like ideas and thoughts about life all day. Mm -hmm. And like, that would just be the greatest thing. Um, I feel project so recognized. <laughs> yeah. Well, and projectors <laughs> want, they, 
they want to be seen so bad because they're designed to be seen. Um, but for projectors, their strategy. So your strategy is basically like, what's your little hack for making your life easier, basically for making sure your aura is like interacting with the world in the way it's designed to. So projectors have yeah. like- Yeah, you don't a, go a, against a, the way that your aura is meant to work. So project, yeah. So projectors have a, a very focused, like almost penetrating aura where they can like go, they can like see into your soul. Yeah, like that. They can, <laughs> they can really penetrate into the aura of another person. So they can really see you so deeply. Like it's amazing to be like seen by a projector because they- they see things other people don't see and they usually have a lot of great like wisdom and advice to give people, but their strategy is to wait for the invitation to share what they have to share because if they don't wait, and maybe this has happened with you two, where maybe Amber is, I don't know, given some unsolicited advice that like wasn't invited. And then when it's not invited, it's, it's not going to be received in the way that you intended it. And then what happens is basically if projectors go around giving unsolicited advice and kind of putting their energy into places where it wasn't invited, they end up feeling unappreciated, unrecognized and bitter. Um, so that's kind of like a big, a big theme for projectors. Um, I have a cool example of that. Yeah. So um, this, the lead singer of My Chemical Romance, Gerard Way is a projector as far as I know, because online it says that his birth time is blah 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 um and he said that um when they broke up because their band broke up at a certain time he said it felt like the world didn't need us anymore and when we got back together it was because we felt like needed and so i was like oh that's such a cool projector example of like not trying to force yourself onto the world when your wisdom is not uh wanted at that time and then to be to recognize when your wisdom and or like what you have to offer and and like their their wisdom and whatever they have to offer is not like you better do this it's like music and so I thought that that's like a cool example of not everybody's here to be a teacher and an astrologer. Mm -hmm. Some people are here to do other stuff and, and they still have something magical to offer. But um, for projectors, you're not supposed to be like pushing it on to other people because then that's when you start to rub people the wrong way. And I have a million examples of my own life of when I really tried to force my reality and force my ideas onto people and and just have people just be so like, ugh. Like I could tell they're like disgusted by me and they're just like, oh, get out of here. And so <laughs> I had to like do the total opposite of like, once I learned I was a projector, I, I like backed off so hard that I became a hermit. <laughs> <laughs> didn't talk to anybody for like seven years <laughs> <laughs> but but that's what like I, I think that's a journey that a lot of projectors go on is is kind of going like inward um and really just getting to know like what are my gifts what am I into like what do I have to share with the world and you kind of have to recognize that like what you have to say and your ideas and your gifts or your art or whatever it is, is precious and your energy is precious and you don't have like an unlimited resource of energy all the time. So you want to only be giving your gifts in spaces where it's going to be appreciated and you want to like be really looking yeah. at what you have like to give. This, like this a is a space where my mom literally invited me. She initiated this podcast I didn't push her to do it. She, it was her idea. And then I was like, oh, cool. All right. This works for me. I love that. Okay. I love that so much. Uh, Star, do you feel like you see Amber as a projector? Like, does that make sense to yeah. you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing that's great for you to know about her being a projector is that 
it's important that she feels really recognized and appreciated. Um, like when you have a projector in your life, the more that you can be cognizant of like inviting them to share what they have to say when it feels good and just giving them recognition. It's like very, it's just, it's important for them. So it's, it's great to know about your own human design, but it's also great to know about the people in your life. So you can like, you know, love them. Um, so let's talk about you star. Cause I, you know, so basically to sum it up, like Amber, um, you know, is a projector. That's her type. Each type has their own strategy and strategy is basically like, how your aura is meant to sort of operate in the world. What's like one tool that you can use to make your life easier, essentially. That's your strategy. So Amber's strategy is to basically um, pay attention to herself, work on herself, develop her own gifts, and then wait to share those gifts until, you know, there are spaces where they're, uh, where she's recognized and where they're invited. That's her strategy mm -hmm. for you it's a totally different ball game. So you're a manifesting generator. Um, you are somebody who you're meant to live in response. And what this means is that your aura is like a magnet. So it's pulling everything into you. Mm -hmm. So you're not the type of person that needs to like chase after everything. Um, what you're meant to do in your life is basically wait to respond. That's your strategy. And what that means is you if you want to do something, you wait until something pops into your outer reality that makes your body feel excited, basically. So whenever something pops up in your life, whether it's like a person saying something to you, a song on the radio, a bird you see outside, an advertisement, it's just like something outside of you that makes you go, ooh, I like that, or ooh, I don't like that you follow it it's like kind of that simple but it's all would about you, listening can i ask you a question would yeah. you say that a projector's um strategy versus a manifesting generator strategy is like internal versus external that's an interesting way to look at it um yeah yeah like i mean they're they're very different because projectors your strategy is really related to other people it is like I would look at that but the I can't project. be focused on other people because when I do I rub them the wrong way I gotta like be right. focused on my own internal stuff and then yes <laughs> I say I say other people because it's related to when you share things with other people like mm -hmm. that's what it's helping you understand is like when and how do I share things and like impact other people's lives. But the process of it is also internal because you're wanting to kind of like focus on yourself. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, the the manifesting generator strategy, um, it it's not necessarily like it's it's just a very it's a very different strategy. Um, but but basically because you're a manifesting generator, um, things come things come to you. So you don't necessarily have to like go and <laughs> go and like chase after things have do you does this happen to you in your life where like something happens and you just get like a gut feeling that kind of makes you go like oh I don't like that or like oh yeah I'm interested in that <laughs> look at her face right now <laughs> scowling I am <laughs> thinking <laughs> like some people's energy if I don't like it I tolerate it until I get the opportunity to go away from it. So when <laughs> you get I disgusted am... by somebody, mm -hmm. your human design strategy is supposed to like, you're supposed to pay attention to that and, and then respond to it instead of ignoring that feeling and just tolerating it. Like what you just said, Becca's going to tell you what to do instead. Yeah. So, so with manifesting generators and generators, they have the same strategy. So if you're a generator listening to this, this applies to you too. Um, you guys are, we're all taught to make decisions from our logical mind. Um, you know, pick the best option way, you know, pro and cons list, but for generators and manifesting generators, since your strategy is to respond, it's all about your body as specifically your gut. Um, which is the sacral center in human design. So the decisions you make don't really have anything to do with your mind, which is 
it's difficult and it takes a lot of unlearning because that's how we think we need to make decisions. But basically the thought is that your gut is like connected to a higher intelligence that that surpasses the logic of your mind. The mind is a great thing and can like think and observe and ponder life. But according to human design, the mind is not the one ultimately that's meant to make the decision. So it's kind of like your gut yeah. is like your gut has a higher intelligence, if that if that makes sense. That's true, because when I married Amber and Olas's father, I did it on a gut, not, and we only knew each other for 10 days. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny because manifesting generators are like fast, like they do things mm -hmm. really quickly. So that also. And my mom makes has ADHD. So she's, she's like a, a manifesting generator, superpower, super <laughs> Super so manifesting. <laughs> I can't if I like. I'll think about something for like the longest time, and then I'm like, "Ugh, I'm tired of thinking about it." So let's uh, maybe look at uh, YouTube and see if somebody can pull my cards for me. <laughs> Some random stranger, like, do the tarot yeah. cards for me. You're not gonna, yeah. You're not gonna be able to to navigate decisions through thinking like that's not helpful so like if there's one thing you can take away from this it would be that it would be mm -hmm. like leave your mind to just like for for like imagination and like thinking about things like that's fun but when it comes to actual decisions your mind doesn't need to be the one that's kind of in the driver's seat it's about feeling into your actual gut and like your body bodily sensations which is hard for some people are really disconnected from their bodies just because of like how our society is, you know, so the more you can do work to like get back into your physical body and just be really connected to your gut, it's going to help you here. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of goes into authority, which I think would be great to talk about. Do you have other questions, Amber, or thoughts before I? I don't know <laughs> what I was just thinking. <laughs> I was thinking something and then I was like, oh, yeah, let's talk about authority. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So strategy is basically like, wait, I want to how... check in with my mom. Did you understand that stuff? Which part? What, how, what would you summarize around. just was spoken to you just now? Don't think about it. Your gut will tell you. Yeah. If you have your sacral. Yes. Okay. I heard that part. All right. But that's, I kind of felt that already. So I kind of. Because if I think about something, then I want to do it, and then I do it, and then in the end, we all knew that that wasn't going to work. <laughs> I think to the the whole response thing or waiting to respond thing, I don't think we really, I don't think she really absorbed that part. Yeah. Okay. I can explain that in a different way. So waiting to respond basically means that you're waiting for your body to give you a signal before you act you're waiting for your body to give you a sign that like yes i like this thing or no i don't like this thing and the but thing gonna... is something external that has just happened to you like your examples earlier you said like a bird or like and then you're waiting to have something in front of you that is like now it's like a yes or no, like, oh, do I want to, does my gut, does my sacral say, mm, or does it say, mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's why they call it r responding because something external causes your body to respond to it and your body goes, yeah, yay or nay, then you act and follow the feelings that you get. Mm -hmm. Um, and Amber brought up an important point is that your gut also, uh, can only give you like yes or no, or like this or that. So what you can do also to like strengthen your gut response, um, is like a sacral session, they call it. And you guys could do this together where basically like Amber would ask you yes or no questions. Mm. Um, and it could be like, that's fun, you know. Yeah, it could, or it could be this or that. So like, do you want pasta or Chinese for dinner? And whatever the first thing is that you feel, kind of go with that. That's a fun way to practice Wait, do it. it. Do one with my mom right now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do, 
do you do you want pasta or do you want lo mein for dinner lo mein <laughs> okay how did that feel mom in your body well i had a feeling she was gonna say pasta because she was talking about pasta and then they are both pasta but because <laughs> lo mein is the chinese pasta and more flavorful than just plain pasta i went with lo mein so you used your brain you didn't use your sacral oh uh, i just said whatever sounded more delicious <laughs> <laughs> did you feel like you were pulled towards one or the other or did you reason with it inside of your brain of what you calculated what a good response know, ask me another one let me try that without thinking all right <laughs> okay okay do you want a grilled cheese or a turkey sandwich grilled cheese <laughs> did you feel like a like a pull towards one or were you thinking about it I don't know. <laughs> Put your hand on your on your belly. See if that makes a difference. Okay. And what will my belly do? Mom, do you want to do some homework right now? No. Okay. That's and, a good question. Yeah. Um and you wanna I, Okay, how about this? Do you wanna go for a run after this? <sighs> <laughs> okay that sounds that sounds oh. you, made, you, went, you went like uh -huh. like that's a sacral sound yeah that's like your initial so this is what they say is that your gut will communicate to you through your mouth so like there's something that will come out of your mouth and whatever your immediate like uh or like ooh, that's what you should pay attention to but it's ah. something does that make sense See, look you just yeah. made another yeah. sound you yeah. did another ah. sacral response. Ah. You said, ah. And then the other time you said, Ugh, or whatever you said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is helpful to know, right, Mom? Yeah. That's right. really good. That's good. Okay. Should we talk about I authority? have emotional authority. And so does she. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. So how do you pair it if you have two authority things? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so if strategy, strategy is basically how does your, how is your energy meant to interact with the world around it? And like, what's a tool you can use so that your energy can move throughout the world with like the least amount of resistance and like the most ease authority is specifically, how are you meant to make decisions? So this is where the charts start yeah. getting <laughs> this is where the charts I know. How do and, I make decisions? Okay. And so <laughs> that's a good question. So this is where the charts start breaking off and getting differentiated because you can have a projector with emotional authority like Amber, and you can have an, a, a manifesting generator who also has emotional authority like you, Star. So not all projectors have and the same Olas authority. has is a manifester with emotional authority too. So oh. our whole family is emotional authority. So, so your th basically your your strategy informs your authority. So like your strategy is a part of your decision making process, but your authority sort of is like the boss mm. of your decision making process. I kind of look at it like all these parts of you and your chart are like sitting at a boardroom table. But when it comes to actually making decisions, your authority is like the CEO that's at the head of the table. That's like, we're doing this. This is what we're doing. That's mm -hmm. kind of how I look at it. So um, it's great because you guys have the same authority, but the flavor will be slightly different because your, your types and your strategies are different, but right. I'll explain emotional authority. And this is a, a, a nice one to talk about because it's the most common one. So 50% yeah. of people have emotional authority. So a lot of other people listening to this will also have this authority. Basically. Can I interrupt you real quick? Yeah. yeah. So since Becca is a reflector, she has the coolest and probably the most frustrating authority. Yeah which is totally. to wait for the moon to go through a whole cycle. She has to wait a whole month. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I, hate I hate it. I'm like a bad, I'm kind of a bad reflector. I like don't always. You don't do listen that. to, you don't listen to no. the moon. 
No. <laughs> Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, okay. So, basically, emotional authority. You guys, when you have emotional authority, your emotions are sort of the ruler of your decision making so Mm -hmm. when you have emotional authority you guys go through emotional cycles and the cycles of emotions literally just come from your body so there could be this is the example I always say you could be in a cabin in the woods by yourself with no people and nothing happening and you still would go through emotional highs and lows it's like your life will affect it too obviously but you guys literally go you're built to go through yeah. Yeah. Um, and other people, I'm not really like that. I don't have emotional authority. I'm different a little time a reflector. So I still go through cycles, but people that don't have emotional authority don't have as many cyclical highs and lows like that. Like they can be mm. a little bit more kind of even keel, mm-hmm. um, depends, but basically with emotional authority, you every we call that a wave so the highs and lows we call them your emotional waves your um emotional waves every point of it gives you a different perspective on the decision and the saying with emotional authority is there is no truth in the now what that means is you you any point of your wave gives you one snapshot of like a perspective but you need to collect the different points of view from the different parts of your wave in order to get the full picture of the decision you're so So, good at describing this becca thank you i wouldn't have described it that way and that's why i am not a a human design specialist Uh, (laughs) i feel like i've described this one so many times because it's confusing so i like really have tried to uh, explain it in a simple way. It's almost like if you wanted to take a picture of a flower from one angle, you're just seeing that one mm-hmm. angle of the flower. But if you took a picture at every single 360 degree, what's even the freaking point? Why do we need to have every single angle of a thing before we can make a decision about stuff? That's so annoying. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't. I mean, that's more of a philosophical question, but that's just. How Why do I to- need to know? Ev- and plus, I'm a three five, so it's like I have to bump my head up against the wall every for everything in the whole world. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> annoying. It's so so annoying. people with emotional authority are like notoriously indecisive because you guys see so many different perspectives. This is the I'm gonna give you a real life example of emotional authority. This is the example oh, I, I have a recent one, but go for Okay, it. great. I'd love to hear that too. So if you have emotional authority, pretend it's a Monday and somebody invites you to a party. If you're on Monday in like a high point of your wave, so you're like in a really good mood, you'll be like, Yeah, I'll come to your party and I'll bake cupcakes and I'll come and help set up and you'll like commit to all this shit because you're in a good mood. Then Fast forward, it's Wednesday. Your wave has crashed. You're in like a low point of your wave. Then you're going to be like, why the hell did I commit to doing all of that? <laughs> That's my oh mom. My gosh. She never listens to her emotional wave. Yeah. She always yeah. commits every single time right away. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll... And you'll be like, why? I don't even want to go. Like, why did I do this? Yeah, I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm feeling sick right now. I don't know. Yeah. So, but then maybe say it's like Friday and you kind of are in more like a neutral space. Like you kind of went through that high and that low and now you're kind of evened out. Maybe then you'll you'll have some clarity of like, okay, I'm not going to go early. I'm not going to bake cupcakes, but like I'll go for an hour. And that's sort of the clarity that you've arrived on. But you needed the perspective from the high and from the low to kind of see all sides to it, if that makes sense. And isn't it like a 80% yes? Like if you feel at least 80% like, yeah, about something, then you should do it. But it's never like really a full like hell yeah because it's yes. like you can never trust your emotions it's always well, I don't know. yeah and you guys <laughs> both of both of you guys have open like uh head and ajna like all of this is open mm-hmm. which makes you able Those to top see two different- centers in the picture mom 
yeah. like the the you see the like the yeah those top two ones that's what she's talking about anyways okay. go on becca the two triangles yeah. yeah so that those are open which means you're literally open open, open minded like you see it different perspectives that can make you even more indecisive so like you guys so you mean open as in not like colored there's in. nothing in there except for yeah. the three and the other one it doesn't yeah. mean there's like nothing in your head but it, it means that your head you're open to other ideas and thoughts and perspectives whereas some people their energy is more like literally closed off so like if you met somebody that's very met like cl mentally closed off like they're not open to the opinions of other people they're very stubborn those mm -hmm. people probably have like defined ajnas because they're like but that's how they're built they're literally it's like you can't get in there but you guys are not like that so other person yeah because like we're supposed we're supposed to like part of our um like journey on this earth this time around is to take in different information and to kind of fluctuate with things but then those people they're more here to give stuff like their their thoughts about things and they're not here to be affected by other people's thoughts right yeah yeah totally so decision so like if you feel 80 percent on something you're probably good to go so this is how this is where it gets a little like some people get a little confused but you have to understand how your strategy and your authority work together so mm -hmm. for you amber i feel like it's a little it's easier it's, pretty, it's easier it's just like wait for the invitation and wait for your wave to ride out yeah. so oh actually i'll sorry can I give that example that I was just talking yeah. about? So um, here's a perfect example of me not riding my wave and immediately getting totally stoked on something right away. And so I, uh, I saw that there was a job for some astrology place. Um, and my friend is the president of this astrology place and i was like oh my god cool uh this sounds really cool and i got all excited and i and i got really hyped up and i i was on a total emotional high and i was like oh yeah oh i gotta i gotta apply to this place and and then i <laughs> as soon as i like decided in that moment uh, that I was gonna do it I like messaged my friend and I was like I'm gonna apply and she's like all right cool and then and then the next day <laughs> the next day my wave was like totally down here and I was like oh I don't wanna apply anymore and then <laughs> and then so then it got kind of like you know kind of mellows out and I'm at the place where I'm like nah I feel 80% sure that I'm not going to apply. And so I'm like, man, I wish I wouldn't have just like jumped the gun and told my friend like, Hey, like it just makes me look unreliable, you know, but that's why you have to wait and ride the wave and not just jump the gun. As soon as like you get all totally like you get yeah. like, wild. It feels like, <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> some some people are meant to make immediate decisions that's why it's yeah. it's it's cool to look up your chart because somebody yeah somebody who has like sacral authority or splenic authority they are like in the moment they could make the even like buying a house or something major like that they're literally mm -hmm. meant to decide in the moment but you guys you need to sleep on things that's basically if you understand anything about emotional authority it's sleep on it don't make anything it. immediate yeah. Yeah, yeah, and there was a lot of times where before my mom was more open to all this stuff, I would be like, let me sleep on it. And then she would get offended that I didn't <laughs> want to answer her right away. But I was mm -hmm. practicing, I was practicing listening to my emotional authority. And that's like a, an interesting point is like sometimes like people don't, uh, you know, everybody wants everybody to operate the way that they think that they should operate or with the way that society should operate. And I think human design is a great permission slip of if everybody just knew that I had emotional authority, they would be cool. They'd be like, yeah, girl, just like take 10 days. 
do you mean? <laughs> 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 like going for a job, like you're at an interview and you're like, I did a meme a while back ago and it was people sitting at a desk and everybody's having like a meeting and then like it was right after I went to a um an interview a job interview and the whole time that they were talking I was thinking like it's really good that they can't read my mind right now because I'm not really listening <laughs> <laughs> and so my meme on my Instagram, it was like, do these people actually know that during this interview, I was thinking about aliens, astrology, how to sell my crystals, and the other things. <laughs> Mom, why did you bring this up? Oh, What's it have to um, do with authority? yeah, because hmm, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, Becca, here's my it question. It did have a it did have a point, but I forgot. So I my mom it. has a sacral response and an emotional authority. So she's getting <laughs> conflicting things of like her gut being like, yeah, but then yeah. she's not supposed to listen to that. Yeah, this is where it gets confusing. So yeah. if I can explain thing this in the most simple way. So your gut and your emotions need to kind of like work together basically to help you make the right decisions. So when, so, okay. If you want to like figure out what to have for dinner or like, oh, I want to paint a painting. What do I want to use pencil or paint stuff like that? You don't need to wait on. We're talking mm -hmm. about like actual decisions that like are not little things like that. Like, uh, you know, do I want to start a business and like, you know, th those sort of decisions are like, do I want to end a relationship? Like, you know, actually substantial decisions. That's what we're talking about here. So don't get too caught up in the like, oh my God, do I have to wait a week to know what to eat for dinner? Cause you would starve to death. That's silly. So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so basically your gut and your emotions are going to, are going to work together essentially. So when it comes to actually, so say you like apply for a new job and you get the job and they're like, Hey, let us know by next week if you want it or not. And you have to decide that what you would do is when you get the, the email that says, Hey, you got the job. Let us know if you want it. You do want to take into consideration. What is my immediate gut reaction? Um, and then basically you want to wait and you want to wait if a few it changes. Days. Yes. And see if it changes. And basically after you've written out some parts of your wave and you're in a place that feels a little more neutral, you're going to want to kind of check back in. How is the gut feeling? Has it changed? Um, how am I feeling after riding that wave? So they kind of work in tandem with each other. Um, and it, it's, it, it is like, I think that might be the most confusing combination uh, because the gut is in the moment and mm -hmm. emotional authority is, is waiting, but you do want to, you do want to feel into how you feel in the moment, but then you, before you actually commit to the decision, you just want to wait and see how you feel after a few days and how your gut is feeling. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But okay. how much does it make sense? <laughs> well, so today while I was watching um, uh, Secret on Skinwalker Ranch, there was a call yeah it's good um there was a call and then i listened i didn't answer the phone because today's my day off so i'm not gonna answer the phone and then um they left a message and they're like hi this is um your other job and um that you haven't come for in a long time because i know we don't pay you enough and um we have something to tell you and we're willing what to give job you an it's a side job we're willing to give you an increase so just call us back and i'm like it's probably like dollar two dollars or something it's not gonna be enough so maybe i won't call them maybe i will but maybe i'll call them tomorrow because i'm not gonna call them today <laughs> so like i already like know <laughs> about that <laughs> this is the this is the thing. Oh my God. You're so funny. I see where you get your humor from Amber. Um, yeah, we're this the same. Is, you guys, are, but you don't like start. I, you don't even try to be, you're just funny without even trying. You're funny. Yeah. That's what my brother me. says. He's like, you don't even oh my gosh, you're so funny. Yeah, I don't and you're like, what do I, it. You're like, I'm just talking. What are you talking about? <laughs> mm, yeah. 
that's that um that's that uh mercury and aquarius baby mm -hmm. we have that we me and my mom have the same mercury placement so the way that we talk the way that we think is the same Aquarius. oh but hers is uh in like seven degrees aquarius or something like that and then mine is like 21 degrees aquarius so it's different interesting so this is the thing too what you're talking about is like with your human design a lot of this stuff you're already kind of doing it it depends on the person like if you're somebody who's very resistant to like discovering who you are and is like committed to kind of like following the mainstream, then you might have more like work to do and actually getting in touch with this kind of authentic version of yourself. But it seems like you're into, you know, discovering who you are and all of this sort of stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, you probably are already living a lot of this stuff. It's just kind of like, it's confirmation that you're doing what you should be doing. And also it's kind of it kind of helps you understand like, wow, I can really trust myself. Like if you have a gut feeling about something, even if your mind is like saying, well, that's not logical. You know that like my gut is the one in charge. So I can trust how my, if you don't like somebody and you're just getting a gut feeling about somebody, but your mind is like, they're nice. Why would I not like them? It just kind of helps you give more confidence to like, okay, I can trust my gut, you know? So that example of moms, like, that person calling you and leaving a message, the first thing you do is you notice your your sacral response of Ugh, or ooh. You it sounded like you had a Ugh response. Mm -hmm. So step two is to ride your emotional wave and see if you still feel like Ugh, about it. And then if that is the case, then you say peace out i don't care about you get out of my life it's kind of like what esther hicks says all the time in her um things um is like if something is going upstream and it's easier to go downstream then why do you want to fight it and go against the stream y'alls y'alls and mm -hmm. so becca you are a little reflector girl i would love for you to tell my mom what that even is because okay. she needs to know <laughs> okay so <laughs> okay so Remember how we were talking about the the centers, the energy centers, and how mm -hmm. some of them are open, like you guys, your heads are open. Um, and some some of them, they're, they're defined, or like some people would use the word closed, I use the word defined, they're colored um, in, they're colored in. So like you guys have you both have a combination of some of your centers are open, some of your centers are defined um reflectors every single one of their centers are open so that's why they're so rare because it's just not a common thing to have every single center be open but basically when you have an open center wherever that energy is you're you're like susceptible you're like taking in that energy from the world around you so your ajna center is all about your like thoughts and ideas and opinions so that's why when you have it open, you can literally take on the ideas and opinions of people around you. Um, you can like take them in and you can even, you can amplify them too. So like mm -hmm. you, you, I really think like, I don't know if I was in a house with somebody with like totally different beliefs for long enough, I probably would start to adopt some of their beliefs. Cause that's like, that's what it's like having an, an open Ajna reflectors are like that, but with every single center. Um, so it's kind of a bit of a, it's a bit of a wild existence because we're like, we're almost like chameleons because anywhere that you have a center that's open, it's very, it's more chameleonic. It's more mm -hmm. like changeable because you're like, your environment in. really affects you. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas where you're defined, you're more, you're more consistent. Like it's just, that's how you are in that yeah. energy. And it's not as easy for other people to like, okay. So for example, I have my identity your... center colored yeah. in. And so our, my things. mom has that too, right? Yeah. 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 So wh who I am is who I am. You're not going to change my identity. It's a very solid, very in place, like part of me. And 
even if somebody over there has a totally wild, interesting personality, that's cool. I mean, I don't, you know, that's nice. It's not going to affect me. My personality is going to stay the same. But then somebody who has their identity center open, like Becca and other reflectors, uh, you can hang out with somebody with an interesting personality. And then the next day you're like, look at me and my new, I'm a pirate now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great Erg. yes that's exactly right so you guys like because your identity center is defined you that's not very affected by your environment or who you are like or who you're around you just like are who, who you are if you have an open identity center like all reflectors do i i literally will be a different person depending on who i'm around i plus you're like, a pisces <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, I'll go, I'll watch a movie and I'll feel like a different person after. I'll be like, I think I want to move to, you know, <laughs> Alabama and start a bar. I don't know, like, and I'm going to be just... a sports star. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever thought that one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very, so it's cool. Wait, I want to like, know, I... like, the furthest from your reality that you've decided I'm going to be this now. That's a good question. The furthest, yeah, I'm, I've wanted to be so many different things, but they all still kind of make sense. Like I used to want to be a therapist. Like it's, in, it's still in the same. I used to want to like play professional roller derby. That's probably a, very different than where I am. I used to uh -huh. want to like run my own animal rescue uh, or like I used to want to run like a vegan, like nonprofit. Are you vegan? I, wanna, I was for- a, w a long time but no I'm very not vegan. then you started <laughs> hanging out with some cannibals yeah <laughs> not cannibals. That's, good, that's the wrong word that's, carnivores <laughs> that's a good example of of the g center the identity center it's also called the g center which is a weird name but that's just what people call it when I I was vegan for a few years and I was obsessed with it I made it my whole identity mm. I I was obsessed and then I like I, I moved in with a friend who's very into like raw local butter and like eating yes. like, like liver. And I don't know, I don't actually don't know if she's liver, but she's very into like local farming and like sustainable mm -hmm. hunting and stuff like that. And she influenced me and I just like completely stopped being vegan, like did a total <laughs> 180. Um, so that's just, that's how it is though. Like we literally live 20 different lives in our life. Yeah, that's it's cool. great. Who, I, who, I don't know what I'm going to be doing in 10 years. Like it will surprise everybody. Who yeah. Knows? We'll see. That's where astrology can be cool because astrology can, can kind of show you the energetic patterns of where you're headed and stuff. Mm. Yeah. And human design doesn't do that part. Yeah. That's more of like how you're, human design is more like how you're built and how you can go through the world being true to how your energy is is so i have a question aligned. okay so you know how astrology tells you about your relationships and stuff like that does human design also line planetary things like i don't want to ever be with a leo never <laughs> So who don't I ever want to be with in human design? Love that question. That's hilarious. So the, I would say that there's no specific answer to that. Like, it's not as simple as like, you know, Leo's aren't compatible with this sign or this sign isn't compatible with this sign. I think that anybody, it, it, at least as far as human design goes, I think that anybody could be compatible with anybody. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some people where, you know, I could definitely see how things could like rub up against each other. So like, even for example, okay, you're, you're a five, one star and Amber is a, a three, five, you have the, that you have the five in common, but the one and the three are very different. So like Amber is a three, five is going to be the, and kind this of is your profile for everybody listening. Like, what are these yeah. numbers all about? There's a part on your human design that says profile. And then there's a combination of numbers that you can have. I have three, five, Becca has three, five. My mom has five, one. Yes. So the, the difference is that Amber as a three, five is going to be very much more like fly by the seat of her pants. Like 
trial and error, experimenting, kind of a just just do it, just try it and see what happens, like kind of person. But you star if since you're a line one, you you want to have like a solid foundation. You want to have all the information. You want to do some research and then move forward. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see how those two personalities could clash mm -hmm. a little bit because mm -hmm. Amber might be like, let's just do it. And you might be like, hold on. Let's like think about this for a second. But then but she doesn't... really leans on her manifesting generator of just fly by the seat of her pants all the time too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's where you have the layers, the layers come in. But I think it's just about having an understanding of how the other person operates differently from you and just having like a respect. And I think in that sense, th I don't think, I don't believe that there are any types that are not compatible with certain types. Mm. I would what about, have... there's like the, the Venus um, thing in the chart, like the planets on the side. Does that tell you what you, what does that tell you? So, <laughs> so each planet. <laughs> so basically when you look at your numbers on each side, those are your gates, we call them, the little numbers. They're just more like personality traits, basically. But the gates mm -hmm. can kind of tell you, like, um, what are some of your gifts and what are some of your, like, shadows? Basically, each gate is in a planetary placement. Um, so the planetary placement just gives you more context for, like, uh, what area of your life is this kind of going to show up? And I think it's pretty si – I'm not an astrology expert, but I think it's – it's pretty similar to astrology where like Merc, you know, Mercury is about communication. Maybe it's a little different. I don't really know, to be honest with you, mm. but like in human design, you know, I still got to like, do your chart for you. I know we have to do that. Um, um, I, I, you know, when you asked that question, I had a thing that I was thinking of. So like manifesting generators, they are always like, <clears throat> they're here to initiate things and and do something for a little while and then just move on to the next thing and then the next thing and then the next thing oh, and, yeah and so i guess like the thing i would say is if you're gonna if you're gonna hang out with anybody it should be somebody who can get on the same like who can get on board with you just always wanting to like having a lot of energy like me and my mom went to Hawaii together um, uh, last fall and she was like, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I was like, I want to sleep because I'm a projector and projectors don't have a, a defined sacral. So we're not creating all the energy that you're creating and not able to like keep up with you. So I would say get somebody who can appreciate that you want to do a billion things and or they also want to do a billion things with you all the time <laughs> yeah i'd also say when it comes to relationships uh i'll share one thing that i think that pertains to both of you because you're both line five so this is back mm. to the like profile thing where she's a three five you're a five one but you both have the five line so do i i think that's a uh, the five is important to understand in relationships because basically what happens when we're aligned five is people project onto us. Um, so sometimes they, they see what they want to see. They don't quite see us for who we fully are. So there can be like communication issues, like miscommunication. So usually it's like a spectrum and on one end, the projections can be like people project onto you that you can like save their whole life. Like this is what I always experience. And at work, especially like people would just be like, Becca can do that. Becca will figure it out. Like she can come and save the day. It's like a savior complex kind of that people can project onto us. The other side of it sometimes is that we can like trigger people without even meaning to, but like oh. people, yeah. Yeah. So people see something in you that really just reminds you're a mirror, basically. So people are seeing something in you that reminds them about some shit they don't like about themselves. That happens and they every don't, day of my life. And they don't and they don't like you. And you're like, why don't you like me? And it doesn't really have anything to do with you. It's that. Oh, yes. I uh, I learned that. And then 
I don't know. I didn't retain. I didn't retain it the way that you said it. And so I, I, I know that I do that to people. And so I attributed it to um, the fact that Pluto is squaring my ascendant. <laughs> so like astrology really does like have its own thing to say about stuff. But um, mm -hmm. uh, my mom is probably curious about if her chart says anything about career or anything like that. Yeah, what does it say? Okay, so love, um, this is career, money. So, <laughs> so this is where I would I would bring in. So I don't want to get too confusing here, but there's also a like a cousin system to human design called mm. the gene called the gene keys. It's mm. it's basically just a different way of looking at the gates in human design. But I really like I really like the gene keys because I just feel Me like too. it gives what gates it gives, what. What gates gates? Are, <laughs> gates are all the little all the little, the little numbers. numbers. Oh. Those are called gates, but they're oh. also called the the gene keys. But it just gets even more specific. Yeah, that's where those are from. It's mm -hmm. a whole thing. But the 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 gene keys, I I like them because I just think they're they're more specific. So there's an area um, that I would look at in your gene keys. That's your unconscious mars placement in your human design Ooh. chart um and your vocation is like is related to uh like work like what do you do in the world that's like the thing you're gonna exchange money for basically so yours being 18 this is basically all about the energy of correction so like you want, you see where things can be improved and, and corrected so that they can be made better. Cause like ultimately you imagine being this woman's daughter. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole thing. Well, that's where this is a, a projected, <laughs> this is getting into a whole other thing, but that's an energy where waiting for the invitation is important, even though she's not a projector. It, the, the correction is still like it's still advice it's still like you're offering insight that's like affecting another person and so it's important that the insight is invited because when it's not invited it can piss people off right? and it's also called parenting <laughs> <laughs> depends on what moments you're talking about yeah because sometimes so, it's called just being a nitpicky rude lady <laughs> well and this is the thing is that energy can it can feel it can feel nitpicky or it can feel like judgment like it can feel like you're being judged from her perspective she's like i'm just trying to make things better here like i just mm -hmm. want things to be as amazing as like they can possibly be so like life can be great but sometimes on the receiving end if there's not an invitation if like i didn't ask for your opinion it can feel like criticism or or judgment but basically so like, this is to help her with her career though this is a skill that she would use for to make money yeah yeah, oh, yeah. so just go and and tell everybody what to do <laughs> basically it's like and i mean this one could be applied to literally any every single like you know area of work in the universe needs this energy of like let's improve things let's hold things to a higher standard mm. you know that sort of a thing like every everybody needs that yeah um, mom at the place that you just put your two weeks notice with she was telling me like and then this thing is, they do it dumb like and then this thing they don't do this right <laughs> wait and so last night <laughs> <laughs> spill the tea <laughs> there was this little old lady i was putting to sleep mm -hmm. so last night i just told her you just have to be calm when you talk because now you can talk to me and i can understand she said oh that's a good idea <laughs> yeah. that's a great example i love that well let's try and wrap this up now do we have any last um thoughts questions yes i do wait a minute so i'm holding my hand up <laughs> so what are 
these things again and how do I use them? So <laughs> <laughs> for the podcast people, my mom is pointing to if you look at your actual chart and there's like the shape of the man and then there's all these numbers on the side. She was pointing to all the numbers on the side. There's a man in there? Yeah, that's the the in the middle there it's a like a freaking guy. <laughs> Wait, let me show you. Um, oh, you uh, mean like that yoga pose with the chakra look, dude? Look. It's the same thing. Hmm. Uh, it's the uh, chakras. I thought this Here's was like the, a geometric shape of some sort. It's a body. It's oh. a body and that's the body. Okay, so that's... how do I use these bubbles? So those those little numbers on the side, that's what we've been talking about. Those are the gates. The oh. gates are just like, they're more personality traits of yours. And what you do is you can see what planet they're in. And Amber can help you with that because she knows the planets. The planet gives oh, you yeah. more of a more of a context to like what area of your life are you gonna experience this theme basically but each gate is like a theme or like a personality trait what yeah. I would do if you really want to like go ham with it is you can honestly just go google like gate 63 gate 8 gate 37 oh. and oh. you can under you can read about each gate um you can also, I think, I don't know if she still has it available. So I have a friend named Katie. I'll give her a shout out. Her handle is, um, it's sort of spiritual, but there's periods in between each. It's like sort period of period spiritual. She had a free download that was like a cheat sheet of all the gates. She might still have that. Um, mm. That would be a great resource, but you can Google every single one of your gates. And then if you yeah. kind of understand Okay, so like, for example, I think you have like, you have gate 43 in your Mercury. Mercury is all about communication. Gate 43 is all about basically, uh, like having really um, weird, individual, unique <laughs> opinions. Yeah. So, so so you're you're meant to speak and communicate about all of your weird, out of the box, unique perspectives and opinions basically yeah. switch that makes sense <laughs> so <laughs> so you could do that for every single one it's a lot of information again Wait, what's if you're... mine i want to see what mine is oh you have it oh yeah your um your conscious mercury is 49 which is like revolution it's like the energy oh. of revolution yeah which i love and then uh, the other one is, oh my God, my computer. The other one is 26. Um, the gift of that one is called artfulness. Uh, cause I'm a, I, I'm an artiste. Yes, you are. I'm a writer. Is kind of about like being in the limelight, like celebrating the ego in like a healthy way. Um, but it's also like, it's, they use the term like heart, heart marketing, but marketing could be anything. It could be I'm marketing. It's just like transmitting an idea to people in like a heart centered way. Mm. Um, so, so, you know, that's a simple explanation of them, but like you could do, you could do that with every single one. Again, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll recap this really quick for anyone who's new. If you're new, what I would do is get your chart and go in this order type strategy, authority, really understand those three things then I would move on to your profile. profile then I would move on to your like centers and channels and then your gates that's the order I would go in um mm -hmm. but there's just and then so you much. could even get more fancy and you could learn about your environment and your strongest sense and there's like, so much yeah uh yeah, there, you could just learn about human design for a long, long time. I feel like this is a never-ending story. <laughs> it really Correct. is. Well, we had to, we had to really <laughs> go deep, and we had to get things pretty clear here, which I think we did. And so I would just like to say thank you to Becca for being our 
teacher today. I think that was the first time that I think my mom knows what some stuff about human design is. Wouldn't you say, mom? <laughs> Yeah, it's good that I pulled it up on my like app. So that way I because every time I open this to look at it, I'm like, I don't know what the frick I'm reading about. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so now I know what the bubbles are and stuff like that. Whatever. Yeah. So I more stuff it. to know. There's yes. And like you're a line one, so you you can let yourself just go down the rabbit hole. And like, I can send you books. Like there are so many recommendations I have that I can send you. Oh, you better have that book read itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Becca, Audiobook. where can, where can we find you and what's going on? Um, how can people buy your stuff? Um, so you, so I like to hang out on Instagram primarily. My handle is HD undefined. Um, and what I do now is I run, um, a, a community for women entrepreneurs called the vision with my business partner, who is also a three, five reflector, which is pretty crazy. That's a whole story. Um, and we just, you know, we meet every week and we work on like getting to know ourselves and creating a business from a place of like authenticity. And we, it's kind of like a women's circle combined with like a business program. We meet, we get vulnerable, we cry, we laugh. It's a great time. That's my main jam. But we also do like workshops and have other things. I have a I have a human design for business, like basics workshop. So if you're, now I mostly work with entrepreneurs. If you're a business owner and you want to figure out how to utilize your human design in your business, I have a little workshop that like goes over the basics of that, that you can find. And that's it. That's me. Yay. Wow. Very good. Yay. Well, thanks, this Becca. This is so fun. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. This was a blast. I love this. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you. Bye. Okay. And then mom, stay on. Okay. Bye. Okay, mom. What did you think of that? That's good. There needs to be a part two and a three. Yeah. I think we we got we got the basics. For yeah, because to... when she said that I need to learn the centers, the channels, and then the gates. But the first thing my gut says is go here first. What is and it that you just the gates? Touched? Oh, the, the gates. gates. Yeah, like I want to know that first because it seems more interesting than the yeah. centers. I like I like learning about the gates, and I have a book that's um it, where it has um it's called the Gene Keys. Remember, she was talking about the Gene Keys, mm -hmm. and it has all of the different gates, but in the Gene Keys, it's called the all the different Gene Keys. And it goes all the way to 64. There's 64 gene keys. There's 64 gates. Mm -hmm. And um, and it goes really in-depth. There's like these really long, like 10, 12 page chapters on each one. So if you're like, oh, I want to know about my love life. Let's see what which gate my Venus has. Mm -hmm. Oh, my my Venus is in gate uh, 17. Okay. Let me look at this whole chapter about the gene key 17 and it's like you learn really in depth about it and it's the best definitely check it out okay i was just looking at that book yesterday actually i was looking at 55 hmm. Hmm. and i learned about uh dragonflies oh did yeah you know, they've been around here forever did you know that dragonflies have basically two lives one is a life where they are called a nymph and they swim in the water mm -hmm. fully. Mm -hmm. They don't breathe any air. They just breathe water and they swim. Yeah, around. they're kind of like a parasite. Oh. And then one day their, their DNA just like switches and they're like, you know what? I've never breathed water in my or breathed air my whole life. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go walk on this stick and just go breathe some air and then they go and they breathe some air and then they use jet propulsion in their little bodies and they and they 
they make their thorax unravel and they make their wings come out and then they fly around and then they just they live in the air now <laughs> and they've been around forever since like dinosaurs yeah but the whole like point of learning about the dragonfly with that with that gate was that um it's like people who have that gate which i have it they have basically two lives where it's like one life where they're in the water and they're very reflective and they need to like they need to like cleanse their aura and all they need to like do all this deep dive with their emotions and stuff and then one day their dna changes and then and then they become a little dragonfly and that's what you should I have a podcast about dragonflies <laughs> do you want to have a whole episode about dragonflies uh no all right no but we should have a podcast about little house in the prairie you want to have a an expert on little house in the prairie hmm I'm pretty much the expert on the house of the prairie. <laughs> Maybe we should have an episode where you teach other people about little <laughs> little house of the prairie. Because I I've never seen not even one episode of that show. You have to watch the first episode. I know that Jason Bateman's on it. Yeah, he's at the uh, he's later on, like towards the end before they have like their last season. <laughs> And who else is on there? Um, I used to think it was way too boring, but now I um, enjoy that lifestyle. It teaches you all about kindness. Oh. And who else is on there? What is that girl's name that used to be on 90210 Beverly Hills? Um, okay. How Shannon about Doherty. Shannon Doherty? She's on it too. Mm. So they all start wild, play. wild yeah. stuff. Yeah. And she's actually, um, her last name is Wilder on the show. Whoa. Mm -hmm. She's a wilder. Whoa. 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 Okay. Well, I think this episode's really long. Okay. So go and work on it. Okay. I'll Remember to cut out my birth date. Yeah. Okay, everybody who is our audience we'll talk to you next time if there's any if you want to see my mom learn something you let us know and we'll try and get somebody to teach tarot. my mom let's learn about how to do tarot i know lots of tarot readers so that should be good yeah because it's not that easy to memorize i can't even shuffle the cards because my hands are so little oh no you need some hand extensions. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that, of no. those little little hands. You know those little hands? <laughs> I love those things. <laughs> and apply makeup with your little hands. Yeah, we should have a whole episode about that. Uh, no, that's dumb. And it'll be extra special for the people listening to the podcast because they won't be able to see any of it. And palm readers. We should do a palm Ooh, reader tarot yeah. card combination. I would love to have a palm reader on because I d don't know that much about it. I've tried to learn and I, I it goes in one ear and out the other. And I don't know why. I need somebody to teach it to me, I think. Because I keep mm. trying to read it from a book. And it's just, I'm not retaining the information. There's a guy on Gaia. He um, he has classes on how to do it, if you're interested. Well, our next episode is going to be about you learning how to use your iPhone. <laughs> I can't wait for that because I have no idea how it's going to go. Oh, my God. I'll tell you this. It's going to have a lot of yawning. <laughs> We'll see. It will be very helpful to all the moms out there who don't know how to use their iPhones. Anyways, mm. let's hang up. This and if I don't learn a thing, 
guess what, folks? I'm buying a Samsung again. <laughs> oh, no. There's a lot riding on this episode. Mm-hmm. The next one. So check All that right. out. Adios. All right. Adios. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bing bong.